Hi, I'm David and this is a WXP Things You Need to Know number 9. In this episode, I'll talk about UI making and Adobe Spectrum components. Also, a quick and hopefully welcome announcement. From now on, I will publish a written article on my blog alongside with the YouTube video. They will both cover the same topics. Videos are probably going to be a little bit more chatty. But in the article, you can copy and paste code as well. Now, you can choose the medium you like the most link to the article in the video description. Now, speaking of native UIs, let me bring up the slide that I've shown you in the first episode that comes directly from Adobe. If you focus on the center left part here, you see that the layout engine lets you write, as we already know very well at this point, HTML and CSS. But those aren't just displayed in some sort of a browser context, as CP would do. Instead, UXP maps the DOM representation to a native UI hierarchy at runtime so that the UI is expressed with native host controls. Hence, it's faster as it doesn't require anything as heavy as CEF, the Chromium Embedded Framework, to step in. This also means, as it's been mentioned in the series a lot, but it's still worth stressing, that you shouldn't expect UXP to support everything that a browser would by default. CSS properties, browser API, or HTML elements must be willingly implemented by the UXP team, and it is fair to assume priorities must be given. So, for instance, we've got CSS Flexbox, but not CSS Grids yet. These will come down the line, I'm told. Or, as I usually mention, because I know that several developers are making use of its 2D context to draw particularly complex and also awesome UIs, there is no canvas element yet. So, if you feel like there is something in UXP that is missing and you absolutely need it, feel free to send a feature request to the team. I am sure they'll note that down. There is a forum that you can use. Although, say, animations are cool, maybe it's better to have grids first, as they are more valuable for a larger population of developers and a robust, non-experimental feature. The good part is that we're in a very active development phase, hence we're still in the position to chime in and try to influence the course of action. The UXP team is listening. Okay, at the moment, we are free to use HTML native form elements, so to speak. For instance, select or text area, or checkboxes, radio buttons, inputs, buttons. They're decently styled, not overly cool. You can see them in action in the Kitchen Sink plugin here in the native tab. But be aware that in the long run, those HTML native elements will be deprecated in favor of their Spectrum UXP widget counterparts you can find in the Spectrum widgets tab. Please know that I'm talking about what I have deemed as form elements or UI elements only. Layout or basic elements such as divs and spans and the like will still be available. My suggestion is, when possible, to use Spectrum. Now, it's time to look in more depth to what Adobe Spectrum is and how to implement it in your projects. In the beginning, there was the Adobe Spectrum design system. This is the set of specifications that define the Adobe Spectrum design. The design tokens, the color palettes, typography, how to lay out content, and so on and so forth. All the informed choices that Adobe UI and UX designers made while creating Spectrum. These are just the specs. You could read them and design, say, a Spectrum compliant game console UI or whatever. In order to implement the Spectrum design system in the context we care about, then we need something else. If you Google Adobe Spectrum, chances are that the first thing that you're going to run into is the Spectrum CSS, the style sheet implementation of the Spectrum design system. You shouldn't directly use it, though, because this is more about laying down the design of the Spectrum elements rather than thoroughly implement their behavior. Take, for instance, um, this stepper here. Besides the amount of markup code that you need to write, it looks okay, but, for instance, the arrow buttons aren't wired up. 
So when you click them, nothing happens to the input value. Might be an edge case, but the Spectrum CSS is meant to be used within or to build components that expose a simpler interface, for instance, something like a stepper, just element, which finally brings us to Spectrum Web Components that are web components that follow the Spectrum specs, uh, obviously enough. Generally speaking, a web component is a reusable custom HTML element that encapsulates a shadow DOM, which is a hidden DOM tree that is rendered separately to the document's DOM tree with its own set of styles and behavior. There are two different Spectrum Web Components project maintained by Adobe. One is called Coral Spectrum and the other is the Spectrum Web Components, which is a little bit weird because it has the same name of the object it represents, but anyways. I have no idea why there are two of them, but I like the abundance and I guess Coral Spectrum predates, in a way, the Spectrum Web Components. Uh, I've asked, but I've not gotten any answers. Uh, but all in all, it's the Spectrum Web Components, the kind of Spectrum Web Components that are the foundation for the ones in use within UXP that are also referred to as Spectrum UXP in the documentation. Lastly, since Adobe uses React.js as its framework of choice, a different set of React components have been developed and this is the React Spectrum project. At the moment, React Spectrum components are slightly behind in terms of Spectrum coverage, but they're catching up, and in the future, not now, they are going to be available in UXP projects as well. Speaking of availability, you do not need to import or load anything in your projects in order to use Spectrum UXP components. They are available straight away, just use them in your HTML. And please note that at the moment you can use just a subset of components compared to the ones list in the Spectrum Web Components documentation. As of early February 2021, this is what we have for typography, so SP body detail, heading and label, and for user interface elements, so action button, button, checkbox divider, and so on and so forth. The team is implementing more Spectrum XP components, so keep an eye on the UXP doc pages. And also please note this, the Spectrum UXP components API for UXP 4.1 is not perfectly compatible with the published version of the Spectrum Web Components API, meaning that uh, you've got to play it cool if the API in the Spectrum Web Components is not entirely functional in UXP. Rough edges will be ironed out as time goes by. And since it's a bit small, you can easily miss it. Uh, the API section of each element is this tab here, right below the component's title. There you will find both properties and events. Again, be aware that Spectrum UXP isn't a one-to-one -one match with the Spectrum Web Components. Speaking of typography, I recommend you to always use Spectrum typography elements, so for instance, SP body, and please know the SP dash prefix common to all these Spectrum components, in place of, for instance, the standard P tag. If anything, because they ensure that the text color follows along automatically when the Photoshop theme changes to either dark, darker, light, and lighter. And this is true for SP body, SP heading, and detail, and also label. There is the possibility to use the so-called t-shirt sizes uh, with the size attributes. So for instance, you have, I don't know, L, XL, XXL, MS, and so on. Sizes from XXXL to XS were for SP body too, in case you need them. Be aware that not all the Spectrum widgets support t-shirt sizes though. Uh, for instance, like the SP divider, which is just small, medium and large. Speaking of UI elements, this is most of the times what your plugin will be primarily be made of. Uh, sliders, buttons, checkboxes, text inputs, icon and so on and so forth. The supported Spectrum UXP components are documented both in the UXP mini site 
and more extensively in the Spectrum Web Components dock. But remember again, it contains a larger set than the one available in UXP. Please also note that there might be differences between the two sets. For instance, if you copy and paste from the Spectrum Web Components this code here for SP Action button with an icon, uh, that won't work because of a slight difference in the way UXP handles icons. Proper code, uh, which comes from the UXP doc, will be something like SP Action button and then SP icon with the name and, and the size. Now, since I've mentioned icons, let me show you that you can either use the UI set directly, as in the example that I've just shown you, but only 36 of them are available uh, from this page here, or you can pick any Spectrum icon from uh, this uh, 897 strong collection, just copying the code to the clipboard. And then you have to paste the SVG that you can sanitize of styles and classes that are not useful directly into a normal div. And mind you, it's a div and not an SP icon. And please note the style fill set as current color in the div that keeps the icon's color in sync with the theme. This way, if when needed, you can use also your custom design SVG icons in place of spectrums. I've put together a very simple example. I've created a new Photoshop plugin using the UXP Developer Tools Starter Panel Template. And see this video if you need a reminder. This is the UI. You see it's some sort of a fake t-shirt purchasing uh, thing. Uh, you can choose how many t-shirts you want. You have to pick your size with the radio button and select the color with this drop down and this changes the image down here and then you can add a personalized optional message and when you click purchase then a pop-up comes up and gathers all the UI information. So let's have a look at the code. You see that I'm using an SP heading and SP divider. SP detail provides some emphasis. Please note that a class named row or column automatically triggers the display uh, to flex. This is something that I've discovered just cooking this example and sets the orientation accordingly, which is nice to have. The SP slider contains an SP label and it's of variance equal to fill, meaning that the left part of uh, the slider run is of a different color. An SP radio group then contains a series of SP radio, one of which is checked. Then we have a simple SP text field with a placeholder text. Um, to me, the placeholder is not dimmed enough to look like placeholder and it risks to be mistaken for the actual content, but probably this is something that the Spectrum team is going to fix in the future, I don't know. All those elements are wrapped with a div that has a border color that happens to be okay, no matter whether the theme is dark or light. Finally, we have a row of SP Action Button elements, and please note that the last one uh, with a custom icon that comes uh, from the Spectrum set, has a color that slightly varies uh, depending on the theme. You can fine-tune such things checking against the prefers color scheme in the media queries as it's demonstrated in the style section. Let's have a look at the JavaScript file, which is super simple, and it's all about collecting the UI values in an alert pop-up. There is a listener for the t-shirt color SP dropdowns change event that switches the image source using the value that comes in from the event to interpolate the file name string appending the dash shirt.jpg suffix. The purchase button click handler initially checks whether the t-shirt color has been chosen uh, otherwise, it alerts the user and just returns. Uh, then it goes on storing all the rest of the UI data. And also, please note that it's not possible to use the uh, query selector all size and SP radio uh, colon checked. Uh, this only works with native input elements, hence the need to filter the collection. It's like the first element in the returning array and finally getting the value. 
in the end, the app show alert is fired. Now, a few caveats. Uh, I haven't been able to use any Spectrum CSS property, the kind of which you can find uh, in the core global CSS. That would have been useful, for instance, for color tokens. Alas, uh, it won't work, for instance, if you set the fill to a var that is something like Spectrum Global Color Static Orange 400. Besides, such named colors automatically vary on slightly on dark and light themes, um, slightly but noticeably to accommodate for the simultaneous contrast effect due to the background color change, uh, which is something that I've tried to take into account tweaking the money's icons green manually. Also, please know that the Spectrum UXP interfaces tend to be uh, probably a little bit larger than CEP, especially if you were used to CSS such as jQuery UI or Topcode. Expect around an extra 20% plus of consumed area. I've asked where there are plans for an even smaller version of Spectrum, specifically targeting Creative Cloud application, but I've got no answers yet. That would be useful in my opinion. Finally, if you use Spectrum UXP with React.js, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. First of all, always, always check against undefined or null for Boolean attributes, for instance, of SP checkbox. You should see if checked is true or then set it to null. And use a class instead of a class name. This is something related to web components. And always close tags. More details, uh, you can find them in this page. I think this wraps it up for this introduction to Spectrum UXP. You have seen where it comes from and how to use it. Again, if you feel like there are any glitches, feel free to submit a bug report or a feature request to the team. Spectrum is a really important piece in the grand scheme of Adobe's things, so I'm confident that they will be addressed. Thanks for following along. In particular, let me thank this group of fine persons who have supported my work, donating what they could afford. Much appreciated. Thanks again and see you in the next one. Bye.